Hello and welcome to all of our listening viewers today. I'm Fiona Lang Sharp, IPCLC and Communications Director here at Gold Learning. I'm so excited to be here today with you again. We are interviewing all of our gold neonatal speakers right now. And I can't wait to introduce to you Denise Harrison. She's going to be here chatting about her presentation, as you can see. But let's just check in and make sure that we've got all of our bookmarks ready for the upcoming conference. That's right, folks. It's super easy. All you need to do is go to goldneonatal.com and you'll be able to just bookmark that. You can also check out all of the time zones that you need to know for the live events, which are going to be super important. Denise is going to be recording as part of an add-on package. So know that that's going to be available immediately on June 3rd, which is pretty exciting. And you may have heard me uh, uh, talking about that package as well, which is our pain management in the NICU pa uh, package. So that's going to be awesome to listen to and be ready and up online for you. Well, let's bring in Denise now because I'm excited to hear all about what Denise does and where she's from. So welcome, Denise. It's great to have you here today. Thank you. And it's great to be here. Yeah, well, we were just chatting offline, I know, Denise, because we can hear, oh, I can hear that little accent in your voice already, but I would love it if you would just introduce yourself to the audience and perhaps tell them where you are in the world right now and perhaps where you're from. Okay, thank you. So I am Denise Harrison and I'm a professor and the chair in nursing care of children, youth and families at the University of Ottawa and the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario. So I do live in Ottawa. I've lived in Ottawa for eight and a half years now, but I'm actually from Melbourne, Australia. Oh, fantastic. And so how are you enjoying it so far? I mean, eight years goes by pretty quickly, don't you think, Denise, uh, when, you're, when you're a transplant from another country, but you came from somewhere quite warm to quite cold. Yes, exactly. And we do have very long, cold, dark winters here in Ottawa, yes. but I have embraced the winter. I love to ice skate. I love to oh. ski. I love to just be out in the ice and the snow. But I, I do confess this last winter has dragged on and it's still pretty cold and dark out there today. Yeah, it's amazing. I think we've heard that right across Canada this year. It's we have had the longest winter yet, I think, in a while. So let's hear let's hope, Denise, that we have spring right around the corner. That'll be fantastic. So Denise, I was gonna ask you um about, you know, what you've done over the years, but this area, of course, to me is of great interest in, you know, neonatal pain, because once not recognized, um, certainly has come a tremendously long way. Um, and I'm so excited because I know you're gonna be showing some of your work, but tell me, how did you get into this? Why were you drawn to this particular area? Okay, so I was a neonatal nurse for many years and a pediatric intensive care nurse as well and also I'm a midwife. But oh. I've been in the neonatal intensive care unit at the Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne for many years and doing many painful procedures on our sick babies as we do. But one day, one little baby really got to me. He was a baby with chronic lung disease and I was helping putting a uh, intravenous line in. And he became very compromised. We used no pain management and he actually arrested. We need mm. to resuscitate him and we still needed to put that line in. And I right. knew that this distress that we caused him and subsequent oh. physiological compromise was sure. purely due to the pain. So on that day, I felt very angry and very sad and mm -hmm. thought we have to do this better. So that question, how can we do this better, really drove my program of research, which at the time I had not intended to do research. I was a clinical nurse and happy to stay that way, but I really couldn't anymore. I needed to do something to help these babies. Boy, it sounds like there was a fire burning in your belly there in terms of, you know, all the sayings I can think of. Be in your bonnet. You were like, I'm on a mission. I'm ready to go and make a difference. So that's amazing. Um, how did you, did you have to recruit people to come on board and uh, share in this experience of research and those types of things? And how receptive were they to you when you started talking about this? 
Yes, yeah, so the neonatal unit, the Royal Children's Hospital, uh, the, I subsequently went on to do a blinded randomised control trial. This was the mm -hmm. first trial ever conducted in the unit and so we were pretty new at research and the support from the nursing staff, medical staff and lab techs was amazing. So I, I actually performed a trial of small volumes of sucrose compared to water in our right. sick hospitalised babies and at that time we really did not know if this intervention worked in these older sick term babies that had had surgery and had already been on morphine or fentanyl and so the response in the unit was was great and I've gone on to research this area around mm -hmm. Australia and now of course in Canada, Canada yeah. and certainly the work is very well supported by my colleagues again nursing and medical and all my other allied health colleagues too. Oh, fantastic. It's so good to hear because I think it seems like everyone is getting on board now and they, they want to translate that into practice and see it in, a, in every unit. But we still hear, I mean, I mean, around the world, it's not, it may be knowledge based now, but I think practice is still needs to roll over into, you know, what you're doing. Let's talk a little bit about your videos, because this is something I know you've got to be proud of. Um, during your presentation, a little bit of an inside scoop here you're actually going to be showing some of the videos I believe that you help produce. Um, tell me when did this inspiration come into play because I think it's such a brilliant way to showcase uh, the evidence because people learn in different ways Denise. So how did you get inspired to do these videos? Yes that's a good question. So after my masters I went on to do a PhD and do more work about really understanding what we we're actually doing about pain management and how sucrose was actually working and mm. at the end of that I moved to Toronto to sick kids and actually did a postdoctoral fellowship with Professor Bonnie Stevens who has really been a leader in the field of neonatal pain research. So it was at that time in 2008 that I decided we needed to work with parents and we needed to produce a video with parents that can be used for parents and also for staff and nice. it, took a, it took a few more years to make that happen and a new job so taking up the <laughs> professor and chair in nursing care at, at CHEO until I was actually able to do that and so these videos are co-produced with parents, so parents right. are my partners on my research team as well as students and midwives and clinical neonatal nurses and in some cases we even have children on my research team depending on the question. So sure. these videos are really made targeted at parents, by parents, for parents but of course staff find them really helpful as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, sometimes because if you've been in practice for a long time, which I have been, we didn't always used to do it this way. And there's been quite a bit of controversy, I think, over the years about having your baby at the breast, for example, and causing pain. And I think the argument, uh, and I think you're probably going to talk about this a little bit, but, you know, one of the myths was that they would associate breastfeeding with pain if we gave, say, an injection um, at, you know, at site or had to do a blood draw. And that just isn't true. I think the research has shown us that there's a much better results if the infant is at the breast. Isn't that correct, Denise? Yes, exactly. And I mean, it's only one immunization or, or one heel lance or one venipuncture, right. whereas the mothers are breastfeeding eight to ten times a day in that newborn yes. period. So Sorry. there's absolutely no evidence or it doesn't make sense that babies would ever associate pain with the mother because in fact the mother is the one comforting the baby and, and reducing the pain. It's, it's much safer that way rather than removing the baby from the mother and then the baby has nobody to comfort them. 
I know we've we've come a long way I think Denise because it used to be you know put the mother out of the room and wasn't that true like have the the mother on the other side of the door we'll do the procedure while the mother's not there and those types of things and I I think that we've really come such a long way and the, I mean I think just if you talk to the mums and listen to what they have to say they will tell you over and over again that they want to be there that they want to be comforting their child and you know that they're there in that experience as a mother baby dyad you know and that's so important as well and I I love hearing the mum's stories when that's been successful and I'm sure for you that's that's very similar as well when you experience that yes exactly but we're still not that great in doing it like oh as I show in my presentation some units are still separating the babies from the mothers and some of us nurses still really prefer to do the procedure without the parents there and right. so my next phase of my research is really working at identifying these barriers to ah. best um, best evidence-based pain care for newborns and working at different ways to address these barriers with parents and with nurses and midwives and lab techs. Oh, that's going to be fantastic. So was this, uh, we were talking offline because uh, you've got some new research and new papers coming out. Is this something that you were talking about, Denise, that, uh, that's happening in your research? Yes, exactly. And one of the perceptions from nurses and midwives and lab techs is that parents don't want to be there. But as you said, when we ask parents, well, they do want to be there. So that in that perception really needs to be fed back to the nurses that, you know, parents do want to be there. The baby belongs to the parents, not to us. And these are ways that we can work with parents that are very cheap, very easy, very simple. It actually doesn't take longer. A perception mm. is that it takes longer to do the procedure and we are we are very busy. But in fact, yes. it doesn't take longer because we have a calm, quiet baby. Oh my goodness. Well, I, I tell you, I'm just thinking about all this, the scenarios that perhaps I've personally been in with my own babies uh, over the years that have had to have, you know, procedures done. And I'm thinking about the mums that I've been there um, as a support person. And, um, you know, and I can just, I can imagine that the separation causes anxiety. And, you know, it, there's just so many things that, we, you know, that we do know better. But you're right. There's still some perceptions out there that we just, uh, you know, that we can, if we just remove all the parameters, we'll we'll get it done quicker or it will be easier or those types of things. So I'm really excited to hear more of your research uh, coming out, Denise. And I know that you're going to have a fantastic, uh, you know, webinar to show everyone here at Gold Neonatal. And I'm certainly so excited. So thank you so much for joining me here today at Gold Neonatal. Okay. Thank you, Fiona. Well, that was just lovely. Isn't it great to hear um, what's happening around the world? And Denise really is an inspiration to all of us, I think. Uh, and I know that all of you listening in will think that too. And, and I wonder, as you're listening to what Denise and I are talking about today, how that translates to you. You know, pop us a line and let us know if perhaps in your facility um, you've got some of these measures in place. Of course, you can come and listen to the full presentation. Uh, Denise and I are going to be recording an event together and you'll be able to come and listen to that on June 3rd so check it out again goldneonatal.com uh, the add-on package will be ready on June 3rd and also of course on June 3rd we have our keynote so that is a free and open access uh, event that's live it's going to be with Nicholas Ambleton talking about pre uh, prebiotics in the new in the uh, newborn and I'm so excited that all of you will be able to come and join us for that as well. Well thank you again to Denise Harrison for being with us here today and of course to all of you our listening audience. Bye bye for now everyone.